some drama in the Republican conference this week, now spilling out into public, over the issue of this impeachment against Joe Biden. Uh, Republicans everywhere have a long thought that Joe Biden needs to be impeached uh, for any number of very good reasons. And finally this week, you do get an impeachment inquiry announced by Kevin McCarthy. Uh, that's great. But then you have some interesting objection being raised by Congressman Matt Gates, a man who does support impeachment but thinks that there may be a distraction afoot. Take a listen to him. On this very floor in January, the whole world witnessed a historic contest for House Speaker. I rise today to serve notice. Mr. Speaker, you are out of compliance with the agreement that allowed you to assume this role. The path forward for the House of Representatives is to either bring you into immediate total compliance or remove you pursuant to a motion to vacate the chair. Yeah, uh, Matt Gates uh, going after him. And, and this morning, uh, you get NBC reporting that frustration has boiled over in a closed door House Republican meeting uh, this morning when Speaker Kevin McCarthy all but dared his detractors to file that motion to vacate the speaker's chair and try and remove him. In the meeting, McCarthy telling House Republicans, if you want to file a motion to vacate, then file the effing motion, according to two sources in the room who confirmed the comments. They say it was a nod to members, including Congressman Matt Gates and others, who are threatening to force him out of the speakership if he doesn't comply with their demands, like putting certain bills on the floor and not passing a stopgap bill to prevent a government shutdown at the end of the month. Uh, for more on this, let's bring in Russ Vogt. He's the president for the Center for Renewing America and a former uh, director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Donald Trump. Russ, great to have you back with us, sir. Thanks for having me on, Vic. Uh, this, uh, this spending battle uh, that's happening right now and, inter and impeachment, the impeachment inquiry, how do the two things relate to one another? Well, I mean, in general, the speaker has been out of compliance with the agreement that he made with conservatives to become speaker. And that had to do on one front with the accountability towards the Biden administration, impeaching Biden, Mayorkas, Garland, using that tool that is, is clearly uh, there and, and ready to be used. At the same time, he's tried to move you know, past the terrible debt limit deal that set us back financially. And instead of trying to recover from that and find – common ground with conservatives about ways to move forward. He hasn't done that either. And so he just put them on a hamster wheel where, you know, he's tried to distract them from the fight. It hasn't worked. And now two things are coming to a head on a government shutdown. And I think folks are saying, look, you're either going to really try to impeach Biden and not just pass this along. And remember, just to be clear, McCarthy didn't do that this week until the, the speech from, from Gates was noticed on the floor. So that was a change of his own policy in, in recognition of the, the gathering storm from conservatives. And then you have the funding fight that is coming because we have a deadline at the end of September. And I think these things are coming to the head. And, and I don't think Kevin McCarthy is going to survive so, at all yes. unless he agrees to fight the Biden administration with all he's got. So as a condition of his speakership, he, pa he promised conservatives in the House – that he would uh, shepherd the passage of 12 clean spending bills. As the congressional calendar looks right now, there is no chance that occurs by the end of the month, is there? Well, he what he agreed to was to be at a, a pre-COVID spending level and be at regular order. Now, regular order is, is, is essentially uh, an effort to be able to pass bills on the floor. He's wasted eight months, seven months, six months, whatever it is. He's wasted that time. The real key condition, though, is to be at a level that would cause you to cut the woke and weaponized bureaucracy that Biden has ramped up and is the thing that is starving the American people of border security, energy security, uh, is dealing with the prosecutions against an entire half of the country. And that is where I really believe the fight is, yeah. Vince, is that they have to use this. This is maybe the only leverage, we, leverage point we have for the next year. Totally. They have to use this to be able to defund the bureaucracy in the Biden administration that is at the throats of the American people. Yeah, I mean, I, where are the Republicans? I get, I get, we get some of them on the show, and they seem to agree with it, but I don't hear a lot of volume all over the place on defunding things like Alejandro Mayorkas, defunding all of these ridiculous special counsels, defunding political prosecutions, defunding the U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, defunding the D.C. District Court, 
defunding all of the out of control components of our government that deserve it. It's because for to too long we've had in Washington, D.C., Republicans who are cartel politicians. They intentionally try to not accomplish their policy objectives by in order to preserve political stability. And doing that, instead of you and I focusing on where the actual leverage points and them doing it, what they do is they find other things to be talking about, hearings, whatever, and they never want to go for the jugular about where they can actually do a lot of good for the country, and that is defunding the woke and weaponized bureaucracy. And, and then thankfully, you know, there's 20 members of the, of the House Freedom Caucus and potentially more. They're going to insist on that in this yeah. upcoming next three weeks. Well, now, I don't know about you, but I, I personally want to see all of this happen right now. I want to see the, them meet their spending obligations to the country uh, and cut, this, this, the, as you mentioned, kind of the woke and out of control, abusive bu bureaucracy in the federal government. And simultaneously undertake an impeachment proceeding against Biden that digs up every last piece of dirt and airs it out for the American public. I mean, they can do both, right? They can, and I think that's the point that, that Matt is, is making, is that don't let Kevin McCarthy do this slow-mo impeachment resolution investigation that is nothing more than an effort to distract on both fronts when – the American people expect, and there is no reason why he can't do both. And I think that's what folks are, are ensuring is not happened, that impeachment doesn't become a shiny object. It's important. It needs to be done. And the spending fight as well needs to be prosecuted well. Now, uh, I, I do have to ask, um, do, you, do you think, I don't know if you know the answer to this question, but one of the things I'm concerned about is by simply announcing the impeachment inquiry uh, that he, that the House Republicans may not have the powers that they claim they get from undertaking an impeachment unless they actually vote for it, right? There's no floor vote on this subject. Uh, the argument that Kevin McCarthy has been making over and over and over again is, well, this will give us the apex of investigative power. Nobody will be able to stop our subpoenas now. Is that true? Well, you know, I'd, ha I'd refer to them in terms of the arguments that they make procedurally. I know that that was a key uh, thing that we made in terms of uh, when we were in the midst of the impeachment. But I think the reality is, you know, does the executive branch feel like they need to participate in the proceedings because it is a serious endeavor? And uh, we certainly didn't think it was a serious endeavor. We thought it was a trumped up charge. Uh, I think the record here is so much greater um, and I think if you're combining it, and this is what I'd love to see, Vince, is I'd love for them to actually combine their accountability and their subpoena power with their funding power of the purse so that we don't even have a debate about whether uh, the, the agency would respond or not, that we would actually have a debate that they would have to come forward because they knew that they would be on the hook from exactly. losing all of their funding. And, and in the case of, say, the Justice Department, they have officials who are implicated into the very things that are bringing Biden up for impeachment. Uh, so if you have uh, an, an investigation into the Biden family's finances that has been routinely stymied, in the words of whistleblowers, uh, by government officials, that is a perfect target for both a Biden impeachment and government defunding, correct? Yeah, no question about it. I mean, that, that's exactly the way they need to be thinking about this, is that your appropriators and your your weaponization committee individuals and your impeachment committee uh, individuals need to be all in the same room with a, with a comprehensive strategy. I mean, how how aggressive should these Republicans get uh, and, and how and how different would Congress need to look in order to get there? Because it does feel like there's really only a handful of people who are willing to say all of this out loud. We need to to really gut the government right now because of its abuses. Well, I mean, in general, I think we have a problem not necessarily with the way that Congress is organized, but the fact that most members have no idea on the Republican side what time it is in the country. And it's late. And, and I think you and I would say it's close to 1159. Most Republican members would think it's about 3 p.m. And, and I think that's the problem is that they, they are just captured by the framing of the liberal media. And so they don't actually devise strategies based on what's necessary to save the country. Yes. They, they devise strategies to make themselves feel safe and to be accepted within this, in this town, and that's not going to get it done. And I think that's what we need to change. And hopefully this 
this fight over the speakership is one of those leverage points to yeah. change that that perception. Do they respond, Russ, vote to pressure from the base if if uh, if enough conservatives across the country begin placing pressure on these members? Do they take it seriously? Yes, absolutely, and I think that's there is great ability for the conservative movement, the grassroots movement across the country to to bust through the cartel when it's very clear that their members are, are, are not aligning with their interest. And the, the duty for those of us like you and I is to expose the extent to which the, the, the games are being played, the shiny objects. Those, that's, once those things get exposed and we can have enough people inside D.C., in, inside the Congress, like a, a Chip Roy or a Bob Good, a Dan Bishop, when you have those cartel busters, that all that you need is the grassroots to come along behind them and um, and get their back, and I think we, I think that's what you're seeing. I mean, Matt Gates co- takes to the floor a couple of days before where he had said, you know what, I appreciate all of the those who um, were asking me to do more, and I took those to heart. And next thing you know, he's going down uh, unilaterally and taking action. That's what happens when people across the country are involved in the political process, encouraging those who are already leading. And for those who are not leading, getting them as much accountability as they possibly can. Yeah, and and apparently in the Republican meeting this morning, uh, Kevin McCarthy was uh, indicating that it would be a loser for Republicans to allow the government to shut down. So basically because the Republicans would be blamed for a government shutdown. And he pointed to uh, the fact that you'd have World War II veterans being flown in on these honor flights and the Biden administration, just like Obama, would uh, take bike barriers and wall off the World War II memorial to stop these great American vets from getting there, uh, saying, well, you can't because the Republicans shut down the government. The the feeling among establishment Republicans in Washington right now is if there is a government shutdown, they will be blamed and it's going to hurt them. Yeah, they live in night terrors with regard to any sorts of shutdowns, and they're always wrong politically. Um, when I was at OMB, that my job during the last shutdown was to keep the government open as much as possible, consistent with the law. And of course, I'm not there now. Donald Trump's not in office. But it, the, the legal art, their ability to artificially and politically shut things down is so much more limited now because they have a, we have something to judge them on about how things could be if they were willing to. That said, in addition, at any moment, they, if there's some issue with the national parks, they can put a bill on the floor that says we're going to open up the national parks and make the Democrats oppose it. There's, a, there's countless ways to navigate and execute through a political fight like this. What is necessary is the willing to actually have the confrontation and to be able to tack through the wind to get to where you're going. And that's what McCarthy and the establishment has been unwilling to do. And then once they are willing to, once we're in that, I think there's a lot of ways to, to, to manage the political risk and to ensure that the Biden administration owns it for the fact that they caused it. Yeah, it's it's amazing what we're entering into. Russ Vogt, thank you for helping us uh, keep our eyes on uh, what the government's really up to here, including Republicans in Congress. Really appreciate your time, as always, president for Center for Renewing America and a former OMB director under President Trump. Thank you, Russ.